All right, guys, how you doing? John Meadows here, and I'm with one of my best friends in the world, and he's also the owner of Elite FTS, Dave Tate. And we, we're very lucky here. So here at Dave's facility, we have a lot of different squat bars. And I've, you know, as, as, many, of you, as many of you know, I love squats. And I've had to kind of change how I squat over the years just because I'm a little more beat up. But what I want to show you today is we have multiple squat bars set up, and I want, Dave is going to talk to you about um, the kind of the different uses of the bar and you know just kind of how to intelligently program them but we have a safety squat bar right here we're going to cover that and then right here is my personal favorite bar Dave introduced me to this back in I want to say 2010 uh, this is called a spider bar and then we have a regular bar over there so this would be my favorite but um so Dave like for the general person out there, you know, a lot of questions I get are, what's the difference between the bars? You know, if I squat with this bar versus that bar, is this bar right for me? Is this bar wrong for me? Like, what are some of the things that you think about um, when you think about these different bars? The, um, the biggest difference really with the bars is going to come down to stability. All right, so the safety squat bar probably is going to provide the most stability out of three bars. That's the ability to brace, get tight, and not have somebody being thrown all around. The straight bar is, would be second to that because it's also closer to the center of gravity. Okay. The spider bar is going to be the most unstable out of the three. Okay. The fourth bar would just be the cambered squat bar, which doesn't have the handles as the spider bar does, which would be the most unstable. Yeah. The spider bar is the spider bar because I can't grab a straight bar and I realized I couldn't grab a cambered bar either. So I stuck a yoke on the spider bar. So that's kind of how the spider bar became what it is. So you, wait a minute, hold on, I didn't know that. So you like made the spider bar? Yes. Holy cow, I didn't know that. Yes, right. because it used to just be the cambered squat bars that we used yeah, at West yeah. Side. So check this out, Noah. See, this is, for, for you guys that don't know what a camber is, it's this right here. And when Dave talks about stability, this can actually swing. So Dave, I did not know this, but Dave added this feature which is the safety squat bar how they're made on top of this because so right up here was hard to grab a hold of right? yeah well i couldn't even grab down here so on a camera bar you'll grab here uh -huh. i can't even grab there oh, so what happened was you know as we get older more and more exercises get pulled out of our arsenal it's just kind of what happens so i can't squat with a straight bar so that was out then i was left with a safety squat bar but over a period of time it's like F the only thing i can use i need something else yeah. So the cambered bar, that's where that came in. And then we just called it a spider bar because it looks like a spider. So it, it has that, it still has that degree of instability mm -hmm. that you have, which helps develop the core. It, helps, it lowers how much weight you can you know, lift with it as well. So there's that difference there. From a strength perspective, they all serve different purposes. Okay. So you know the the safety squat bar is typically going to be a bar you're going to use for somebody that wants to build up their upper back because it's always trying to throw them forward a little bit because it is a yoke so from a bodybuilding perspective it will help develop the you know the traps in the upper back area as well as the legs as long as you're not holding on the um, spider bar because it moves so much is, and and the weights are lower that's yeah. another thing to keep yeah. in mind the weights are lower to the ground so it's really kind of closer to your center of gravity as well, but it does have a tendency to swing, which is going to work and activate the hips a little bit more. The regular squat, everybody knows what that does. So the way that I integrate these bars when I'm programming them for the lifters is two different ways. If it's a max effort exercise, I like to alternate the max effort exercise every week. Okay. So I want to change it. And, I want, and it's still max effort, so I want them to work up and strain. I don't want them to miss, but I want them to do essentially one rep max. I like to alternate from a heavy to a light. Okay. So in that regard, let's say they really suck at a safety squat bar. So I put them on a close stand safety squat bar, and they go down and their best is 300 pounds. Compared to their best with a straight bar might be 500 pounds. Okay. So one week I might do a high box squat, so it's really heavy for the one rep max. 
the next week I might go to a closed stance safety squat bar so it's really low for the max but it's still a one rep max right. pushing in that 90 degree range but I'm able to waive the actual workload. From a bodybuilding standpoint, most bodybuilding hypertrophy training happens in a 50, 60, maybe 65% range. So, and the reps are higher, obviously. Mm -hmm. So let's just make it easy and say sets of 10. Yeah. If you can do on a straight bar, 300 pounds for a set of 10, more than likely on a safety squat bar, that's gonna drop a little bit because you're not used to the bar and so forth. So that goes to 200 for a set of 10. But they're both sets of 10. They're both done with the same amount of effort. Yeah. So one of them has a workload of 3,000 pounds, the other 2,000 pounds. So depending upon how you want to vary and cycle the programming, you can either ascend the workload through the squat or descend the workload. Gotcha. And the spider bar falls in there is another alternative which gives you a whole completely different max, which is typically for most going to be a little bit lower, little bit lower than, than the safety, safety squat bar. Yeah. But as they become more proficient with the bars, it actually reverses itself, yeah. where the spider bar will become the bar that they're the best at because it's really the lowest center of gravity. They learn how to stabilize a little bit, but they won't be really good at it until their hips and glutes and core get strong enough to keep right. it from right. moving around. So that's how I would look at it from a bodybuilding perspective is not just oh it's a different exercise so we're going to hit the muscle from a different angle and all this other stuff because right, right. a squat still a squat still a squat still a squat and the weakest squat for everybody would probably be a front squat so that would fall at the would the lower the end lower and lowest weight but still high. at the lowest weight yeah and I don't want to make things seem way too complicated I mean it's still it's 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 programming from a long term, which is how you kind of put a lot of your programs together. So these are factors that you're thinking about when you're going in there. So you're just not randomly going in and saying, oh, I want to do this. Yeah, this is really cool. Like, so if you guys didn't catch out, what Dave is saying is the bars that you can use the most weight with, essentially, are going to tax you the hardest. And then maybe as you're getting more fatigued, maybe you drop down, you use a bar uh, or a variation like a front squat where you don't use as much weight, but you're still putting the effort in uh, and vice versa. That's a really cool way to look at programming. And you, you made another interesting point about how things change. I remember back in the day when I could do 585 for 10 with a regular barbell and I could front squat or I could safety bar squat maybe two plates and a quarter. And now I could maybe do three plates and a quarter on the safety squat bar and maybe two plates and a quarter mm -hmm. with a regular bar. So it is interesting to your point of how things change over time. And in the last eight years squatting here, you and I have basically done the safety squat bar and the spider bar. I mean, mm -hmm. those are the two bars we've really used the most. And, um, you know, and in terms of leg development, my legs actually got a lot better. Yes, because it's a different stimulus. It's it's a, a, a specialty bar will always expose your weaknesses faster than a straight bar. And that's because everybody's grown up using straight bars. Yeah. So when you start to put different stimulus under people, it exposes a lot. Of <laughs> once you get past the, the neural accommodation, just learning how to do the movement. So after they figure out how to do the movement after those three weeks, it's like, holy <laughs> you know, I feel the safety squat bar, my quads like crazy. Yeah. It's not because it works your quads more. It's because it's exposing that your quads are probably a weak point gotcha. in that movement, where for somebody else, it may blast the shit out of their glutes and hamstrings because that's where they're weak. Right. That's where the rotation and using different bars to squat with, I think is necessary, not just for strength, but even for hypertrophy. It'd be, it'd be no different than you, you don't wanna go in and do a leg press every workout, every time you go in the gym, for the same sets and rep range because after a while you're just going to be accommodated to that. Right, right. The body have no reason to adapt. Okay, so um, Dave, I appreciate your time. I would highly, highly recommend the spider squat bar. Man, this thing is freaking nasty. I love it. But um, hopefully this gives you guys some ideas in terms of programming um, and not just changing things just for the sake of changing them, but for actually having a reason to change things. So um, if you want to look up Elite FTS, very simple, EliteFTS.net now? Dot com. Dot, oh, you're back to dot com. Yeah. All right. 
There's a whole story behind that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, you'll find we'll, it. We'll skip that. Just Elite FTS okay. will get you there. Um, but anyways, uh, appreciate your support, guys. Thanks for watching. And for Dave Tate, myself, we'll see you next video. Thank you.